Hello, I'm Darren McGee and today's topic we're going to be talking about the world of the narcissist, um, the belief system of the narcissist. Um, what do they believe about themselves? What do they believe about you? What do they believe about the world around them? What is it has them behaving the way they do? What is it has them behaving so destructively towards others? And let's be honest, sometimes destructive towards themselves as well. Now there are different types of narcissists. There's the uh, there's the overt, the grandiose, the in your face who threatens, intimidates, bullies in order to get their own way. There's the covert or the vulnerable who plays on your sense of guilt and shame, who constantly needs rescued. You know, um, every solution has a problem. There's the what I've learned recently, the communal. Uh, narcissist. That's the one who performs things publicly in order to be adored, to be worshipped. There's also uh, what's sometimes known as the, the closet narcissist. Now that's someone who may have all those traits and behaviours as well, but it's not themselves they worship. It's someone else. It's uh, say like a, a parent uh, or a family, which is more like a cult. They tend to bask in someone else's glory. Now, so as I say, there's different types, but the belief systems are very much the same. The strategies, the behaviours may be different, but essentially I believe their belief system is pretty much the same. Now, I think it's fair to say we all have narcissistic traits. We can all behave narcissistically from time to time, but the difference is when we're talking about malignant narcissism, and when it's persistent. Now, Generally, we can do something, uh, behave selfishly and regret it because we can empathise, we can sympathise, we learn, we adapt. Um, with narcissism, it's only really about learning a different strategy as opposed to learning to be a better person. They have never learned to regulate emotion, which is why they will either explode or implode just to escape that uncomfortable feeling. So what is it the narcissist believes? Or rather, I think it can be helpful to look at questions the other way around sometimes. What is it the narcissist wants you to believe? Well, first of all, they believe they are right. They want you to believe they're right as well. They believe they are right. They know everything. They have all the answers, all the solutions. They are an expert on, doesn't matter what it is. You could be a brain surgeon, 30 years experience, they will know more about your profession than you do. They will openly score your experience or your ability with their expert knowledge. Or they will triangulate with things like, I heard that, I know someone who, just to show that they have more knowledge than you do. And they know more, they are right, because they're the alpha. The alpha male, the alpha female, I know there are differences, subtle differences, but essentially they are the alpha. So anything that challenges that is considered a threat. Any accomplishment on your part, any achievement, anything at all, any opinion or belief that lies outside of them feeling like the alpha has to be shut down immediately. And again, looking at things the other way around, because they are right, by default, they can't be wrong. They can never be wrong. They are never mistaken. They are never in error. They are never responsible. The fault always lies outside of themselves. It's the sort of person who wets the bed and blames the blanket. Or they will blame their victim for not telling them they're supposed to go to the bathroom before going to bed. And this will lead them to be very disagreeable. Doesn't matter how ridiculous they look or sound. Even if something is blatantly obvious, they will disagree with it and their reason and their logic is nonsensical. Now in cases of covert narcissism, because that person wants to remain unfulfilled and remain in a constant state of strain, this will make them particularly disagreeable because even if something is offered, something that is in their own best interest, they will refuse it, they will turn it down. First of all, because the decision isn't theirs. They need to have that control to be able to make that choice or that decision. Secondly, they get to remain in that state of strain and unfulfillment. And again, because they are always right, because they are the alpha, they can never be challenged. Any challenge to them at all is a threat to that superiority, which often leads them to believe that having an argument, for example, 
getting the last word means they've won. And the truth is, getting the last word doesn't make you right. It just means you got the other person to shut up. But in their minds, they have won. Because again, they are the alpha. The other thing they believe, uh, they believe they are unique, special, amazing, entitled, powerful. And again, often the logic that they use to prove this is circular, it's nonsensical. And they will use tactics like word salad, just throw things out there that make no sense, just to confuse their victim or the people having to listen to them. And they will use gaslighting, they will rewrite reality, they will rewrite a version of what happened. If they see something happen, somebody do something that everybody approves of, they will claim that they did it. And what fuels all this is this belief that this is my world. You're only part of it. I'm special because you need me. You're nothing without me. I am very, very powerful. By default, that means you're powerless. Which again goes back to that feeling of being the alpha and being right and being in control. So it doesn't matter what the situation is, doesn't matter what the choices are, it will always be their decision. Even your options, your choices are actually theirs. They will give you your choices, your options, and they will make them for you as well because they believe they have that right. Their next belief is you have to believe them. You have to believe their version of reality. You have to believe their truth. You have to see me the way I see me. You have to see this situation the way I see it. If you don't, you're bad. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. You are the one who needs help because they have no resilience to things like disappointment or criticism, even when it's constructive. They see that as a judgment on them. The next belief they have is that you have to earn their respect. You have to earn their trust. And the truth is, you never will, because it will never be enough. But curiously, this leads to like double standards, because they don't have to earn anything by right. You must respect, love, admire, and worship them at all times. And more often than not, they will accuse you of doing the very things that they do. The next belief, the next trait, is that they very much live in the here and now, in this moment. Because everything is about winning. It is how do I win right here, right now? What gets me out of this moment's distress right here, right now? They can be very impulsive. Uh, they can be very reactive. Never really thinking about consequences, even five minutes from now. Which is why they often contradict themselves. They, they will tell the most outrageous lie. And a moment later tell you the complete opposite without even breaking eye contact. However... Again, going back to the double standards, what they will do is they will focus on something you said maybe a moment ago. They may even focus on something you said 20 years ago. Um, you think of the number of people who fell in love with someone, they married them, you know, they told them they loved them, and after years of narcissistic abuse, they've had enough, they're at the end of their tether, they're just about to leave, they cannot take anymore. And the narcissist throws back in their face, you said you loved me. Therefore, you were lying this whole time. Because they live very much in the moment, and because they're very reactive, they, they don't get that concept of other people um, being able to change their minds, being able to grow, to give themselves permission to be wrong, you know, to, to change. Because most of us can look at ourselves at times and we can say things like, what was I thinking? Um, wow, I really messed up there. You know, um, oh, I must have sounded like a real monster when I said that. But with the narcissist, they can't do that. Because when they're telling a story, they will either be the hero or they will be the victim. They will never, ever be the villain. The next characteristic, the next trait, the next belief, is that good people do good things. And it must be seen publicly. They tend to be very kind publicly. They do a lot of work for charity. They, they feed the homeless. They, uh, they give their testimonies in church. But everybody has to see it. And they tend to put a lot of this up on social media. They tend to um, put up posts about 
you know, the good work they're doing here or the good work they're doing there or someone else's good work that they want to be a part of. And you know a good indicator is when they're doing this, they're often talking about what they did. It's got very little to do with the person who may have benefited from it. And the thing about doing these good deeds is, I don't think they actually sacrifice anything. I don't think anything they do is any real strain to them. If there is any difficulty or strain involved, chances are they've got someone else to do it, but they have claimed the credit for it. And when it comes to narcissistic abuse, this is like a win-win for them. Because everybody gets to see publicly how amazing they are, how generous they are, how kind they are. You know, they just want to help people. Aren't they amazing? But the victim, who's going to believe the victim? Who's going to believe that person that presented somebody a wheelchair or uh, gave them a check for something or presented a guide dog or whatever? Who's going to believe that person is a monster? So there are the beliefs, there are the characteristics, there are the traits of the narcissist. Let's have a look at reality. First one is, nobody's right all the time. We can't be, because we don't know everything and we can't do everything. That is impossible. Secondly, they are no more powerful than anybody else. They are no more helpless than anybody else. They may be more cunning, more sleek, they may be more accomplished in certain areas, but certainly they're not more powerful. They are emotionally dysregulated. They are unable to cope with anything outside of their worldview, outside of their concept of themselves. A lot of the time that abuse is them trying to regulate their own sense of self. They will appear very controlling, they will um, appear overly confident, they will sometimes behave overly defeated, but ultimately it's all about winning. And the thing about winning is, for the narcissist, it's not just a win. Uh, a lot of the time it has to be a win-win. They don't just want to look good and feel good, they want someone else to look bad and feel bad. Because being that alpha they believe they only feel good about themselves if they're feeling better than other people. And the narcissist's biggest fear is shame. The feeling of shame. But the strange paradox is the narcissist will behave and act shamelessly in order to escape the feeling of shame. The overt, the grandiose narcissist, they have externalised rage. Whereas the covert or the vulnerable, they have internalised rage. But both experience this sense of unfairness. And that often gets targeted at their victim or their victims. I often think a good way to think of the narcissist is if you think of the Terminator from the Terminator movies. Now I know there's been a lot of movies, a lot of sequels and so on. But if you ever think of the first one, if you've ever seen the first one, there's a line in the first one where the guy says to the girl, you know... This machine only has one program, can't be bargained with, can't be reasoned with, and it will not stop until it fulfills its program. I think, I believe that's what the narcissist is like. And just like the, the Terminator um, robot thing, you know, it will learn new strategies and new tactics, but it's always about fulfilling that same goal, that same program. Which is why one of the things I often say to people, um, you know, look at the difference, discern the difference between the change in a person and the change in a tactic. So, can the narcissist change? Can that Terminator be reprogrammed? Well, I would say they would have to want to. Simple as that. They would have to want to. They would have to want to put the work in. But the difficulty lies in their belief that the fault always lies outside of themselves. So therefore, the solution lies outside of themselves. So because the fault lies outside of them, they want someone else to do the work for them to make them a better person. 
or rather they're already a perfect person so they want someone else to do the work for them to make the world a better place for them and in the case of the covert narcissist um, remember they want to be rescued they want to be helped they feed off the attention others give them by trying to help them but they also feed off that frustration when the other person is knocking themselves out, trying to move heaven and earth for them, and it's never enough. They feed off that frustration, because when it comes to narcissism, they're fine as they are. So lastly, the last belief that I think narcissists have that stop them changing, stop them wanting to change, could be summed up with, I've made my mind up. Don't confuse me with facts. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them in the box below. As I said earlier, there's different types of narcissism. Um, covert, overt, closet, communal, and many shades in between. If there's anything in particular you would like me to talk about next, by all means, just leave it in the comment box below. Okay, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care.